My apologies. It's now time for member statement. <laughs> the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Recently, I had the pleasure of hosting my fifth annual Eglinton Lawrence Volunteer Awards uh, Ceremony. Eglinton Lawrence is home to hundreds of volunteers across countless groups and associations, all of which make invaluable contributions to our riding. Often, these wonderful volunteers work quietly, providing support to their neighbours without any public or official recognition, and frankly, with these wonderful stories of community building and selfless support going untold. I can firmly say that this is my favourite event of the year every year. The best part for me and for those who attend, I think, is not just the recognition that the volunteers receive uh, personally, although that's appreciated, but also the feeling of goodwill and community that comes to everyone in attendance from knowing about these selfless contributions to our community. I believe that everyone leaves this event inspired and motivated to contribute more to our community. This year, over 130 people from more than 20 organizations received an award based on the inspiring work and dedication to our community. And I wish I could list them all here, but let me say they range from religious organizations and school councils to nonprofits, business improvement, area boards, and others. All nominees reflect the spirit of community service in Edmonton Lawrence and show that we can find a meaningful way to make a difference to get involved in our communities. I would again like to extend my congratulations to all uh, of the award winners for the Eglinton Lawrence 2023 uh, Volunteer Awards. Thank you. Member statements. And the me member from Thunder Bay, Superior North. Thank you, Speaker. The Northern Policy Institute and Northern Ontario Municipal Association each opened their recent events with an address by Anishinaabe Elder Marlene Pierre. Dr. Pierre spoke of our responsibilities as leaders to respect the land, respect our roles as treaty partners, and build right relations amongst Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. These are two major Northwestern Ontario organizations putting their commitment to build right relations front and centre. Unfortunately, last week, we witnessed a much older, discredited approach to relations with First Nations. Every single First Nation in Ontario strongly objected to the Building Minds Faster Act Yet the Ford government pushed it through anyway, claiming they know better than First Nations peoples themselves what is good for them. But isn't this the same attitude that led to the violent removal of children from their families and the deaths of so many children at residential schools? And hasn't the Conservative government thus guaranteed years of business instability and conflict? By taking the time to build good relations, Bitigong Nishnabe, the town of Marathon and Generation Mines have shown the way to creating mutually beneficial projects that protect the land, water, traditional economies, and guarantee land remediation. Bulldozer politics will always lead to conflict, but if we put building right relations first, good jobs and a protected environment are possible. Miigwech, merci, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning. Recently, I had the pleasure of joining Halton Regional Police Constables Robert DeViller and Kevin Boschler, who are here today in the gallery at the Crama Cruiser event in my riding. We spent a rainy Saturday morning helping officers fill seven police cruisers with food at the Aldershot Fortinos. The Halton, police, Halton Regional Police host various Crama Cruiser events across the region to help those in need by filling up police cruisers with non-perishable food items. The next Crama Cruiser event in Burlington will take place on June 3rd. This year, they crammed cruisers in support of the Burlington Food Bank. Volunteers filled cruisers with much-needed food like soup, coffee, canned fruit and vegetables. With the help of the community, they were able to raise approximately $1,150 and 950 pounds of food, which will go a long way to support the Burlington Food Banks and the needs of our community. We all need to pitch in and give back. It warmed my heart to see the community come together to support the people of Burlington. I would like to thank the heroic law enforcement officers of the Halton Regional Police, Fortinos, Robin Bailey from the Burlington Food Bank, Constables Del Viller and Boschler, and to everyone who donated, volunteered, and contributed to the Crama Cruiser event to help those in need. Thank you. 
Member statements. The member for Kitchener Centre. in the Hamilton community. Two days ago, six ACORN members, Stuart Kazinga, Damien Ash, Christine Neal, Arnim Hugh, Marnine Schroeder, Liz Scott, alongside the Canadian Environmental Law Association, the Hamilton Community Benefits Network, the, the Hamilton Legal Roundtable on Poverty Reduction, and the Hamilton Community Legal Clinic, delegated to the Public Health Committee and successfully called on the City of Hamilton to protect tenants in extreme heat. ACORN launched their extreme heat campaign in September 2022, and due to their advocacy, a motion passed unanimously at Public Health, which states that staff in licensing and bylaw divisions should prepare an information report for 2023, identifying 2024 priorities and timelines for the development of a maximum heat bylaw. I'm happy to share that this motion passed with unanimous support from Public Health Committee, and I look forward to seeing Hamilton be the first city in Ontario to implement a maximum heat bylaw, hopefully by 2024. Thank you. Thank the member for Hamilton, sir. Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to highlight the noble work of the Mukti Foundation in Brampton, an organization founded and led by seniors whose main goal is helping grieving families move on with respect and dignity. Speaker, this organization strives to help reduce the stress these families face with the loss of a loved one by helping to alleviate the financial burden. Each time a member unfortunately passes away, the organization collects a matching donation amount from each member, and these funds are put towards the funeral and cremation cost. Their goal is to ensure that every member is honored and remembered with respect, empathy, and kindness, and that their loved ones are supported throughout the grieving process. Speaker, great community-led initiatives like the Mukti Foundation are truly inspirational, and I want to express my sincere gratitude to the founders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Today is the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia. This day feels especially important as we have seen a rise of hate towards the 2S LGBTQI plus community right here in Ontario. Drag shows are being targeted by extremists who spread homophobic and transphobic lies. This happened right here in Toronto at Toronto Public Libraries. Yesterday, I met a teacher who was at the York Catholic District School Board meeting. She described that divisive meeting as traumatic for students and and staff who were there to speak about the importance of raising the rainbow flag. Queer and trans families are feeling unsafe in a whole new way, Speaker. A parent told me that they were being targeted, then reported to the Children's Aid Society, and then doxxed online just for affirming their trans child's gender. Government members have said everyone deserves the right to feel safe. The government can do more than just talk. They can act by passing my bill, keeping 2S LGBTQI plus community safe act. Through all this hardship, Speaker, my community remains resilient, strong, and full of hope and joy. This is evident in the work of the archives, the largest queer and trans archives in the world, located in my riding of Toronto Centre. This year, the archives is celebrating their 50th, 50th anniversary, and their work to preserve our history is more important than ever before. Finally, June. Fa June Pride Month is fast approaching, Speaker. Let's work together to support the queer and trans communities and across Ontario. Let's show them that this House has their back and they can count on every single one of us for support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. Member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, 16 days ago, on May the 1st, it was moving day in Owen Sound. As MPP during the past year, and for Bill Walker, our great past member. We've been at 9th Street and 1st Avenue West in downtown Owen Sound. It has been a great location for the office, as Owen Sound is the geographic centre of our big riding, which goes up to Tobermory in the north and down to Hanover and Dundalk in the south. And as members know, of course, Dundalk is the bee-swallowing capital of Ontario. <laughs> The office has now moved to the Greystone, a newly renovated building on 8th Street, also in downtown Owen Sound. It has a great layout, layout and lots of parking. I say this not only to let you know, because you're all welcome to visit, but more importantly to acknowledge and thank the great team that made it happen. Moving, whether it's your home or your office, is a big load of hard work. In this case, with the newly renovated space, 
It went from planning and managing the layout to technology and safety support, and then to the move itself. Happily, everything made it in one piece. I want to sincerely thank Karen McInnes, Lisa Lapierre, and Julie Blake, the great Owen Sound team, for all your hard work in getting it done, and for the great support of Anita Santon here in Toronto. Colleagues, this is just one example of all the hard work our teams do to help us in our jobs, whether it's moving or managing, uh, answering calls or managing issues. We are all lucky to have this great support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today on behalf of Ontarians living in rural communities who lag behind provincial averages in quality of health and health care. Across Ontario, we've seen a real problem intensified by COVID-19, such as a shortage of nurses, nurses, family doctors, and other health care workers. We've seen the toll it has taken on people's faith in Ontario's health care system. To see the Minden Hospital shut its doors is just another example of this Conservative government's health care crisis. Closed emergency facilities and an absence of medical support services are a reality through many of our rural communities. Dr. Paul Zalan recently wrote in Minden's newspaper, The Highlander, quote, closing an emergency department causes more than inconvenience. In case of a stroke, heart attack, embolism, every minute counts. Interceding quickly is crucial for recovery. Delay results in death or permanent disability, end quote. Outraged by the lack of planning and consultation, Residents brought a petition calling for a moratorium on the closure with over 17,000 signatures. As the summer season begins, Minden's population triples with cottagers, kids attending camp, and other tourists. The new Halliburton plan has not yet filled its doctor shifts for the summer, while the Minden Hospital had its schedule filled until September 2023. Community members are seeking full transparency on the decision-making process and access to the transition plan. They need to know the impact of closing the hospital on vulnerable populations, health care staff, and regional growth. If this government cannot keep Minden Hospital open, it's a signal that they have given up on rural health care. The people of Ontario. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. Many times over the last five years, I've referred to my riding as God's country, and for good reason. We have so much to offer, not only to the province of Ontario, but all of Canada. And not the least of that, least of which is the sweet maple syrup that we produce. In my opinion, some of the best maple syrup in all of Canada comes from the townships that surround the city of Peterborough. And Speaker, my team and I have decided that we should be celebrating all of that great maple syrup. Just last Saturday, we held our first pancake breakfast in Apsley featuring maple syrup from North Kawartha. This Saturday, we'll be at the Isabel Morris Park in Lakefield for our next free pancake breakfast, where residents can sample that sweet breakfast nectar from 8 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. On Saturday, May 27th, we'll be at the Curve Lake Community Center serving up pancakes and maple syrup. Then on Sunday, May 28th, we take our pancake roadshow down the Highway 7 to Havelock where you can sample syrup from 8 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. at the Havelock Lions Centre, also known as the Havelock Arena. We'll wrap things up on Saturday, June 10th, in my home township of Duro Dummer at the Warsaw Arena from 8 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. I'd like to invite everyone to come out to one of our pancake breakfasts to sample the great nectar from eight different local producers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past week, I had the privilege of attending the York Regional Police Appreciation Night, where our community gathered to honor and recognize the outstanding contributions. I have a personal connection to the law enforcement as I proudly served as a member of the York Regional Police Services Board in 2005. While we celebrated that accomplishment, our joy was overshadowed by the devastating news of a tragic loss of our OPP Sergeant Eric Mueller. At only 42 years old and a father of two, he was fatally shot while responding to a disturbance. 
Our hearts go out to his grieving family, as well as the two other OPP officers who were injured in the ambush. We will never forget their bravery and sacrifice. In expressing our gratitude, we must not forget the invaluable support provided by the families and loved ones of our officers. They understand the challenges and uncertainties that come with this profession. As we observe our Ontario Police Week from May 14th to 20th, let us focus on raising awareness and recognizing the exceptional work of our police services. May God bless and protect them as they continue their noble service to this great province. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.